So, we've been called to a, a boat this morning which has got an uh, actuator jam failure, a new installation for a Mighty Mariner. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is to look at the amount of throttle that's required. You can see already that the cable at idle is a long way um, past where the idle position is. And you can see, look, that it's a very short amount of movement. So I'm going to measure that first and find out how much stroke we require and then I'm going to try and match that from the actuator. So quite simply I put a steel rule along the side of that and I'm going to move it to find out what the maximum travel is. So the maximum stroke requirement is about 35 millimeters, which in itself is very small but um, we'll, sit, we'll set up the actuator and see how we can get from there. So I've already put the cable on the inner hole because I know we're going to be struggling to get the minimum amount of stroke that's required for this um, and that's in its idle position at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it to its full position and then look at what uh, stroke that we've got so at the moment you can see that's uh, let me just put that back on there for you you can see from the end of that cable there we'll find ourselves a nice position to do it on um, you can see that that is in the order of about 60 67 68 something like that so uh, as I say, I'll move it away and we'll see what we get. What I also did, um, what I also did was I also um, screwed the uh, potentiometer, the trim potentiometer down on the actuator so that I could uh, get the minimum stroke to start. But you can see if I move that there now, that it tries to pull it further or to reduce the stroke further. So I've done that just so I can get the minimum that's available from that hole and then I can uh, look to um, measure that now and if I measure that from the same place it was before you can see that I've got um, just under a hundred millimeter there so 68 or so to 98 is about 30 mil so that's good because it, it shows that we'll probably be able to get our 35 millimeter adjustment quite easily uh, to provide the right amount of um, travel from the actuator to match the um, RPM required from the engine. Okay, I've adjusted the trim potentiometer so that uh, now you can see I've got a hundred and two millimeters or so on the raw button. I've dropped it. A uh, hundred and two millimeters or so on the raw for that. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, hundred, hundred, one hundred and two. And I'll go the other way and see what we've got the other way now. So now back at uh, idle and you can see that we've got about 64 maybe, 64, 65, so you know I can quite easily, um, see if I can hold that there for you, oh sorry, I can quite easily um, reduce that slightly using the uh, trim on the actuator. to give me that 35, you can see that's what I'm doing there with that screwdriver to adjust it to the 35 uh, minimum mil that we want. Okay, so I've double checked that again and we're now getting 35 millimeter stroke from there. What I'm going to do is to make sure that all these fittings are done up on the actuator, it's most important so that uh, in future they don't come undone and uh, give you an, an actuator problem or a jam of some sort. Uh, but I'll do those up and then I'll look at the engine again to see how that stroke provided by the actuator, the 35 mil, compares to where it wants to be on the idle on a full position on the engine. Now you can see that the idle position of the actuator is quite a long way short of where the idle position of the um, throttle lever on the engine is concerned. So we're going to need to look at whether there's a possibility for us to move the clamp position. Um, and I think it's going to be too tight by the time we go to that position there, the next one along, and obviously it's in the wrong direction for us to go the other way. So we might need to, to use a cable clamp. Um, now the other thing is, can we wind off the end of the cable safely? Obviously we want to get at least one and a half times the diameter of the rod end on the cable. And you can see that you know, that's really where we want to be and it's going to be off the end. So we're going to need to look to move that clamp position forward to match the idle position and uh, then we can 
can make it good. Okay, so uh, we're going to need to look at that. So that's how far we are away that fully screwed on the, the uh, rod end. And uh, you can see that that is probably uh, less than that distance there. So we're not going to be able to move it to that next set of holes along and then put the rod end um, down because I think you're going to find that's, that's a difference. But I'm going to measure that just to be sure. Yes, as I thought, the um, the uh, rod end is only about 15 millimeters away from the ball, but the clamp is about 25 millimeters away from the um, new holes. So if we move it 25 millimeters forward, we're not going to be able to um, contract the um, the ball end to get it on. It's going to be past the idle position that we want. So we're going to need to get the clamp position somewhere in between there and there um, by using a plate. So I've applied a, um, a cable clamp kit to the end of the cable and you can see that if I hook up on those back holes there I'll be able to sight my cable clamp position directly in between those two holes which is where I wanted. One was too far back, one was too far forward. So if I pick up on the back, the furthest back holes there which haven't been used before, through the clamp plate I'll be able to put my clamp position which is just uh, there with my thumb is just there. You can see it behind the hose. Um, I'll be able to put that just in the middle where I want to and have ample adjustment on my um, end of my cable. As you can see, things are starting to look pretty rosy straight away. The position of the uh, quick release ball joint is bang on pretty well where I want it to be. Uh, it's a bit of luck, you've got to have some in life. So I'm going to put that on there and uh, then try the throttles. Now uh, you will find some of these brackets are not so uh, friendly. They sometimes are only drilled to suit a 30 series cable, so the um, position between the clamp position and the end of the cable gets longer for the bigger series of cables. And we only use 40 series cables on actuators uh, because the actuator has sufficient torque to provide uh, in excess of thir the 30 series cable size. And uh, so you will sometimes find you have to drill out extra holes further back or make extensions to the brackets to enable yourself to get the clamp position to the, that correct. Okay. What you want to do at both the idle and full position is to be able to take the ball, uh, or to take the um, end off of the ball and slide it back and forwards like that. You can see that the um, we're just making sure that it meets the idle properly. Um, you could be tempted to come back and hold adjustment, but then as you see it goes there, but actually you wouldn't be back on completely on the idle stop. So just make sure that you can get the ball on and off nice like that. And if you go too far, you can see it then becomes a struggle to try and get it on. And if you leave it struggling like that, then it won't, it will provide an actuator jam because the actuator will try to drive it too far. So in that mid position there where we had it is a good look straight on, straight off without anything moving. And we're absolutely on the idle position. I can't go any further than that with the uh, cable. Again, we're going to make sure that this nut is fully done up and uh, locked off. Okay, and in some instances, or, or a lot of instances, I would tend to apply some Loctite to it to make sure that uh, it doesn't come loose with the vibration. Okay, so we're now at the full engine RPM position. So let's take that off and see what that looks like. I would say that's pretty good. Um, you can see it's going on and off. I'm holding that right up against there, and if I put it on there, it uh, it just slips on nicely, and it doesn't appear to be tight in either direction. You want it obviously to be making sure that you are making the full RPM, um, but you don't want it to be to be uh, pulling too tight and giving you an actuator jam because it's struggling to get to a position it can't get to. You can just see that's just relaxed a little bit on there. So I might just increase the stroke slightly from the actuator to make sure that it achieves the um, idle position. Now when I increase the stroke, it's going to increase it at both ends. So what I need to do is um, to increase it, but then perhaps wind this uh, end on in one turn in this direction to because it's pulling uh, to make sure that it, it matches the position of the idle to the full RPM for the engine and to which the uh, cable stroke is given. In fact when I looked at it again 
what I did was I just wound the cable on end on one more turn and that could be the full RPM and you can see that I'm still getting the idle position there nicely so I've left the stroke at 35 millimeters and uh, I've just adjusted it on the rod end to give myself a bit more full RPM okay or to make sure I'm achieving the full RPM so everything is really nicely applied there now I've um, coupled that clamp on there with some nice head bolts going through the bracket and I've got a lock nut on the back of there to make sure that it doesn't come off and everything's tight this end. The final check with these controls is to make sure that when the cable is at its uh, full position that it's not, uh, the actuator is not trying to pull further than the cable can go. So here we're at the uh, full RPM position. I'm holding up the black knob and I'm moving it to where the full engine RPM position is and you can see that it's going over the notch in the cam and if I let go of it that drops straight into it. I'm not forcing it in any way to try to pull it to meet it. I'm just getting to where the full position of the engine is. I'm letting the ball go and it's dropping straight in that cam. I'll try and get you a better shot there. So it's dropping straight in there without me having to pull the uh, cable any further or to pull the lever any further which is pulling the cable so I'm not stretching anything and the actuator then is then meeting that position nicely without having to, to, to uh, stretch and likewise on the gear side you can see that it drops straight, straight in the hole without any resistance and in fact on the gear side you'll usually find that the full mechanical lever is a little bit far past the detent of the gearbox so you can, you can it will actually go a bit further you can see it's gone further there but it, it can come back and sit in the detent position on the gearbox which it needs to achieve from a warranty point of view and uh, everything is then nicely set up on the actuator the last thing to do is apply the labels so that's it the labels are now applied so if some, somebody needs to um, operate this boat from the actuator they can see what head and stern is and what item of full rpm is um, I've gone around and checked all the screws and the fixings etc on the actual they're actual they're tight uh, obviously with a control like this if they come loose and you lose control of the boat then you could be in some serious problems so I've done that and uh, if you wanted to put some paint mark on the threads etc so that you can see if anybody has tried to tap with it or undo it that might be a good practice as well and make sure of course that the lock nuts on the trim positions are also um, done up as well so we completed the port side and uh, we're now going to mirror what we did on the port side to the starboard side. That's very often the case with um, most uh, new builds, obviously the engines will be identical. So whatever you do to the port side or the starboard side to start with, you'll need to do to the other engine. Okay, so that's what we're going to do and uh, set this one up the same. Just a little thought about the cable installation here. You wonder why the boat builder has chose to go from the actuator down to uh, the bottom of the hull then and then come back up to this point here and then come along and down onto the engine. It would have been much better if it had followed that uh, rib there in the hull back up to the actuator. It would have kept the night cable run you know virtually straight whereas you know a 180 degree bend has been introduced into it there uh, for, for no apparent reason whatsoever. So uh, just to be clear I would have come out of the actuator and come along this line here and then come down straight onto the engine and straight onto the gearbox. Would have been a really very smart installation. Um, and, and this is all completely unnecessary to, uh, to go right down to the, to the hole down there. Okay. So as you can see, both engines are now set up. And as I operate it, the, uh, there's no strain in from the actuators in the hard position. and the gearbox is meeting fine, what have you. I have noticed that the gearbox um, clamp position for the starboard engine is much different than the port engine. You can see there the clamp is sat with a bit of the bracket still say out the end on the starboard engine. And if I go over to the port engine, the clamp is actually sat out the end and it's at a much different angle. And I think what's happened is that somebody stood on the gear um, bracket and that's what's pushed the starboard side down. So I will just make the yard aware of that, but um, there is a potential that if those brackets become bent, that is going to alter the position of the actuator. So they need to be wary of that 
and perhaps put a support on it to uh, make sure that uh, as people jump up and down the brackets don't get bent and we'll just make them aware. Otherwise the job's done now and uh, it's a twin station Mighty Mariner installation all working very well.